eyewitness accounts from people who claim to have gone beyond the veil of death, only to return to this world with an urgent message that you need to hear. For today's guest, a sudden illness led to a near-death experience that would instantly catapult him to a dark and terrifying place until Jesus lifted him out and showed him the glory of heaven. Get a shocking revelation followed by a message of grace and hope as Howard Storm shares his incredible experience of death, torment, rescue, and resurrection today. I'm Jewish Voice. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice, a program to help you understand the Jewish roots of your Christian faith, Bible prophecy, and world events surrounding Israel. Today's guest is Howard Storm, a former college art professor who during a class trip to France was struck ill and actually died in a Paris hospital only to find himself leaving his body and traveling to a place he didn't even believe existed. Now, let me start by saying that when we talk about the afterlife, we are heading into some uncharted waters. That being the case, the testimonies that are shared by our guest today don't necessarily reflect the views of either myself or Jewish Voice, so please keep that in mind before you pick up the phone or fire off any emails. Please welcome my guest, Howard Storm. <laughs> Howard. Great to have you. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to hear your testimony. I've looked at your book, and it's just amazing. We're focusing this series of programs on the afterlife mm -hmm. because this is a message that I believe everyone needs to hear. You need to hear it, and you need to tell your friends. I want to begin by talking about your life before you had this experience because I think that really helps to set up how dramatic this whole thing was. Talk about that. Well, the experience happened in uh, June 1st, 1985. I was a 38-year-old um, university professor at Northern Kentucky University, and I was also the department head. Um, married, had two kids. Simply put, I had faith in science. Um, all of my friends believed that there was no God, there was no re religion, was all a lot of um, hocus pocus and superstition and uh, we were all quite vocal about it. I mean, we were die-hard atheists. Um, so you thought, what did you believe happened after you die? I didn't believe. We all knew that we were a biochemical, electrical entity, you know, and that when it ended, it ended. It was just over. That was it. That's all there was. Okay, so now take us to that, to that moment in Paris, France. You're on vacation. No, art 1985. Tour. You're on art an tour. art tour. Yeah. And what happens? At 11 o'clock in the morning, uh, the day before the end of our trip, we'd been away three weeks, I had a perforation of the duodenum. I didn't know that at the time, but basically I had the most acute pain I'd ever experienced in my life happened right in the center of my belly, inside my belly. Dropped me down to the ground, kicking, screaming um, in terror because I didn't know what was going on. They called uh, the desk at the hotel. Um, he called an emergency service. A doctor came pretty rapidly to the hotel caught me off the floor, knew exactly what the matter was, it was quite obvious to him, and said that I had to have surgery right away, and he was sending me to a hospital to have surgery. So an ambulance came. If I didn't have the surgery within an hour, I would die. The doctors in the United States told me that that was true. Um, my life expectancy on the outside was five hours without the surgery. And they also did not give me any medication because they said that I was going to be having um, anesthetic general anesthetic when I had the surgery, so they didn't want to give me anything because I would be getting that in a few minutes when I got to the surgical hospital. So you're about to undergo surgery, you're in terrible pain in the hospital, and then what happens? They put me in a room and left me there for 10 hours. No doctor, no nurse, no pillow, no medication, no blood pressure, no temperature, no sheet, no blanket. It's a Saturday and it was socialized medicine, I just got lost, you know, fell through the cracks of the, of the system that they had in place. It's shocking, but it's, so you actually believe you died in that room? Oh, I'm, I am quite convinced of it, and the doctors in the United States all told me it was a miracle that I survived 10 hours, because it's unheard of. With a, um, I had a three um, millimeter perforation in my stomach. So what happens then? Well, I went, un um, I went unconscious after 10 hours, couldn't take the pain anymore, and I, also I couldn't, um, I was struggling to exist, which 
primarily meant breathing, struggling to breathe. And uh, I couldn't do it anymore. So I um, went unconscious, and then I awoke from that unconsciousness, and the pain was gone. And I'm like, I'm so happy. I mean, <laughs> like I, I'm, I'm better. <laughs> and I'm standing there next to the bed, and to my confusion and horror, there's something in the bed that looks exactly like me. And I knew it was me, but I knew that it wasn't alive anymore. So like what we see on television where they're hovering over their body and seeing, you're actually standing next to your body and seeing your body laying on the bed. Yeah, but it's, it's scary. It's horrifying because, you know, it's, it's impossible. That can't be happening. And then I heard people outside the room calling me by name. So the room was bright and lit. And I went over to the doorway of the room and there were people out in the hall in the, in, and it was shadowy and gray. And they were staying, staying back in the shadows and they were saying, hurry, Howard, hurry, come with us. We can't wait any longer. And I'm saying, you know, I'm sick. I need a doctor. I need surgery. And they're saying, we don't have time for this. You've got to come with us. We know all about you. We've been waiting a long time. And so my assumption was is that they were going to take me, walk me into surgery. So you followed the voices. Right. And you th at this point, you think you're still alive. Oh, yeah. I felt more alive than I've ever felt in my whole life. My, my eyesight, my hearing, my taste, my touch, all my senses were heightened. They take me on this long journey, these people. And um, I later came to believe that they were people who had lived in this world. And they were the, uh, they were the escort service to take them into the world that they had uh, gone to after they died. And um, it got increasingly darker and darker and darker. And I found I was just so terrified by being with them. And I knew, I knew this was not good. I knew wherever I was, it was not, I was not in Paris. It was not the hospital. And we weren't going us any further. The only problem was that I had no idea where it was. Complete abject darkness. I didn't know which way to go. And uh, they said, you're almost there. And they started to push and pull at me. And so I fought back So you're walking into this and it's getting yeah. darker and darker. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And uh, as I fought with them, that excited them. And um, their excitement was to start biting and scratching and tearing. And that was just the introduction to doing more things that were more horrible, more invasive. You said the pain left, but were you experiencing pain while this was happening? Yeah, and it was horrible. It was, I mean, it was horrible. Being, literally being torn apart. Where did you think you were? I came to the conclusion that I had um, lived an unsatisfactory life, a bad life, as I thought of. This was a little, little just a little bit later into the experience. I thought about um, that I'd not been a good son, I'd not been a good father, I'd not been a good teacher, I'd never been the great artist that I thought I was going to be. I, I, I was a failure as a person. And I realized, and this is very hard for me to say this, but I realized that these people were people like me who had rejected God and rejected everything about God. Did it begin to occur to you, I've died? Oh, yeah. I'm in I, the wrong place? I, I, the way that I thought about it, and I'm, I, excuse me for being so vulgar, but the way I thought about it is that I had um, been flushed down the sewage system into the cesspool of the universe. So now the reality hits. Yeah. I'm dead and I'm in the wrong place. Yeah. But the problem was I felt, the, the weird thing was I knew on the inside that I belonged there. The Bible says without excuse. Yeah. And you, you knew that, yeah. without excuse. Yeah. Now something happens then that changes everything. You, yeah. you hear an audible voice. I hear an audible voice, which sounded like my voice, but I wasn't saying it. It said, pray to God. And I thought, I don't, I don't believe in God. And it said, pray to God. And I thought, I don't know how to pray. And it said, pray to God. And I thought, when I was a kid, I prayed. When I was a little boy, I'd gone to church and we'd learned prayers. And I'm trying to remember prayers and I, and I can't remember much, just little bits and phrases. And as I began to mutter these things, just simply trying to remember them, the people around me became very, very agitated and angry. And they were saying, there is no God, nobody can hear you, and now we're going to make it much worse for you than what we've done already. But I also noticed that by mentioning God, it drove them away from me. They absolutely could not bear to be in the presence of, of any mention of God whatsoever. Howard is going to tell us when we come back what happened when he was unexpectedly given a get out of jail free card, escaping the hopelessness and torment that he thought was going to last forever. Don't go away, we'll be right back.
Your gift of support for the work of Jewish Voice today will make you a key part in providing life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. But our medical teams provide more than just physical care and comfort. This care opens the door for us to share God's love and the good news that Jesus is their true Messiah. Today, we are urgently preparing for our next medical clinic to bless a remote tribe in Ethiopia who are likely descendants of one of the lost tribes of Israel. We go with a powerful sense of urgency because we know that time is literally running out for many of the most vulnerable there, especially infants and toddlers, and that without our help, some of these precious sons and daughters of Abraham will die needlessly for lack of basic medical care. The question is, how many can we help? The answer lies in part with you. These unique people have been practicing Jewish traditions for centuries and desperately desire to one day go to Israel. Would you help save and transform their lives by sharing your most generous gift today? As our special thank you when you share a gift of support right now, we will send you the powerful new book by Jonathan Burnus, A Rabbi Looks at the Afterlife, A New Look at Heaven and Hell with stories of people who have been there. In it, Jonathan Burnus takes you on an unforgettable journey of exploration, examining the ancient Jewish sages, the scriptures, and the first-hand accounts of those who have glimpsed at what lies beyond the veil of death. It's an eye-opening journey that empowers you to reimagine heaven. This version of A Rabbi Looks at the Afterlife is a special, limited, hardcover edition of the book. Plus, you'll also receive an extraordinary book by today's guest, titled, my Descent into Death, A Second Chance at Life, Howard Storm's astonishing and sobering account of what he saw, felt, and heard after briefly dying an atheist. Both books are yours when you share any gift in support of the life-saving, life-changing outreaches of Jewish Voice. But we have an additional gift for you. As an ongoing expression of our thanks for choosing to help so many in need, you'll receive our Jewish Voice Today magazine. This beautiful bi-monthly magazine brings you timely insights into Israel, Bible prophecy, and the Jewish roots of your faith, as well as teaching and testimonies. Please remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. To share an urgently needed gift in support of this vital outreach and request your thank you resources, please call, click, or write now. And remember, your generous gift will make you a part of extending life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished Jewish people on earth. Please remember, the days are short and the needs of these people are critical. Please call right now. Eyewitness accounts from people who claim to have gone beyond the veil of death only to return to this world with an urgent message that you need to hear. For today's guest, a sudden illness led to a near-death experience that would instantly catapult him to a dark and terrifying place until Jesus lifted him out and showed him the glory of heaven. Get a shocking revelation followed by a message of grace and hope as Howard Storm shares his incredible experience of death, torment, rescue and resurrection today on Jewish Voice. I'm back with Howard Storm and we're discussing what happened when he actually died and went to hell. Howard, this is really a gripping story. You have died in a Paris hospital. You're standing next to your body and then voices, you're following voices and things are getting darker and darker and darker and you begin to experience pain actual torment as they grip you and abuse you, and then you begin to pray. In that desperation, I remembered being a child and sitting in a Sunday school classroom and singing, Jesus Loves Me. And not only did I remember those words, but I remembered as a child believing in something other than myself. What that, what that represented to me was something good, something big and powerful and, and other. And I remembered as a child that I used to pray to God, pray to Jesus, and that I believed that that would keep me safe and protect me. And I had nothing else going for me. This is pure desperation. And so I called out to him and I said, Jesus, please save me. And in the hope 
that he might still be, he might still exist, he might remember me. With that, Your he came. Your only hope. My only hope. Clearly at this yeah. point. And he, he came to me and he reached down in that darkness. He was bathed in brilliant white light. So I finally I saw myself and I was all gore. I was just a mass of gore. So as soon and, as you called, it, called out to his name, he came. Yeah. And he into the abyss. Yeah, and he reached down and he touched me and all that gore disappeared and I was made whole. But much more important than that, the, the pain and the gore and all that went away, but he filled me with a love that I can't possibly begin to describe because there are no words adequate to express his love for us. And I, I want to add this, that not only did I know he loved me, but I knew that he really liked me and cared about me. I mean, he, he didn't love me in some sort of condescending, superior way. I mean, it was like, all of a sudden, I just found the best friend I've ever had in my whole life and have today. You know, the, I mean, the one who really knows me. More than my mother, more than, you know, my wife. You know, he knows me and loves me. And he took, he took you somewhere. Yeah, and so we, were, we, we left that place. We just went directly up and out. And I'm like, whoa, this is really cool. You know, we're, we're moving. And we were going, I mean, we were going faster and faster and faster. And off in the distance, I saw a world of light. And I had my huge uh-oh, you know, because I, all of a sudden, like, uh, God, heaven, we're going there. This is not good. And the reason why I felt it was not good, because I felt that I was such filth. I was such garbage so unworthy. I said to myself in my own mind, without speaking this, I said, he's made a terrible mistake. I don't belong here, meaning heaven. And with that, we stopped and he spoke to me for the first time and he said, we don't make mistakes. You do belong here. I don't even know what to ask next time. So yeah. this, is, this is just, it really uh, hits deep. What do you see around you? Well, we had left this world of abject darkness and off was this impossibly brilliant vast world of light which we did not enter into we were stopped outside of it and he called out and angels came and stood around us and he said that they wanted to show me my life so we so you're starting to feel better about yourself at this point well yeah because i got all this attention there. everybody's so nice and kind and they start showing my life and i and i'm the happiness of my mother and father my father came back from the pacific after world war ii and he had a baby boy and it was me and you know and what a thrill. And then as life went on, I saw how this uh, dysfunctional family was interacting and I was becoming more isolated emotionally from my family and how I was becoming more and more manipulative. And I saw myself as a 15-year-old rejecting the church, rejecting the faith. So how are you, you watching know? your life literally as a movie before you? Absolutely. And not only did I see my life, but I could also see like my mother's feelings and how, uh, how I how I hurt her. I never wanted to hurt my mother. I could see how I hurt God. You know, I mean, Jesus is sharing his, his emotional pain with my rejection of him and of God. So he gives you an education about your nature, doesn't he? And, and, and the meaning of life and... Yeah, and I, and I was so glad when my life review was over because I, as a teacher, I came to the conclusion that whatever my life was supposed to have been, which at this point I was still clueless, what, what should I have done? I realized that I had flunked the course, the big fat F, failure. And he said, do you have any questions? And I said, I've got a million questions. And he said, ask what you want. So I asked everything I could think of to ask and he answered everything patiently, carefully, and kindly. We gotta take another break, Howard. When we return, what happened when Jesus told Howard that it was time for him to return to Earth? We'll be right back. Your gift of support for the work of Jewish Voice today will make you a key part in providing life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. But our medical teams provide more than just physical care and comfort. This care opens the door for us to share God's love and the good news that Jesus is their true Messiah. Today, we are urgently preparing for our next medical clinic to bless a remote tribe in Ethiopia who are likely descendants of one of the lost tribes of Israel. We go with a powerful sense of urgency because we know that time is literally running out for many of the most vulnerable there, especially infants and toddlers, and that without our help, some of these precious sons and daughters of Abraham will die needlessly for lack of basic medical care. The question is, how many can we help? The answer lies in part with you. 
These unique people have been practicing Jewish traditions for centuries and desperately desire to one day go to Israel. Will you help save and transform their lives by sharing your most generous gift today? As our special thank you when you share a gift of support right now, we will send you the powerful new book by Jonathan Burnus, A Rabbi Looks at the Afterlife, A New Look at Heaven and Hell with Stories of People Who Have Been There. In it, Jonathan Burnus takes you on an unforgettable journey of exploration, examining the ancient Jewish sages, the scriptures, and the first-hand accounts of those who have glimpsed at what lies beyond the veil of death. It's an eye-opening journey that empowers you to reimagine heaven. This version of A Rabbi Looks at the Afterlife is a special, limited, hardcover edition of the book. Plus, you'll also receive an extraordinary book by today's guest, titled, my Descent into Death, A Second Chance at Life, Howard Storm's astonishing and sobering account of what he saw, felt, and heard after briefly dying an atheist. Both books are yours when you share any gift in support of the life-saving, life-changing outreaches of Jewish Voice. But we have an additional gift for you. As an ongoing expression of our thanks for choosing to help so many in need, you'll receive our Jewish Voice Today magazine. This beautiful bi-monthly magazine brings you timely insights into Israel, Bible prophecy, and the Jewish roots of your faith, as well as teaching and testimonies. Please remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. To share an urgently needed gift in support of this vital outreach and request your thank you resources, please call, click, or write now. And remember, your generous gift will make you a part of extending life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished Jewish people on earth. Please remember, the days are short and the needs of these people are critical. Please call right now. Eyewitness accounts from people who claim to have gone beyond the veil of death only to return to this world with an urgent message that you need to hear. For today's guest, a sudden illness led to a near-death experience that would instantly catapult him to a dark and terrifying place until Jesus lifted him out and showed him the glory of heaven. Get a shocking revelation followed by a message of grace and hope as Howard Storm shares his incredible experience of death, torment, rescue, and resurrection today on Jewish Voice. I'm back with Howard Storm and we're discussing how Jesus rescued him from the depths of hell and the profound things the Lord showed him when he actually died. At some point, Jesus says it's time to return. It's time to go back to well, earth. Yeah, I had said to him, I said, I want to go to heaven because I'd asked him questions about heaven and he'd told me things and showed me things about heaven. He heaven is this is such a poor way to describe it, but it is the fun center of the universe. But you I never mean, actually went to heaven. No, no. You were in some other right. place. But I mean, any, anybody who knew about heaven would want to go there. I mean, it's a no-brainer, absolute no-brainer. I mean, my dog would want to go to heaven if you could understand. So anyways, when he said that, I, we had a big argument, and I tried to argue as forcefully as I possibly could with all of my best arguments about not sending me back to this world because I wanted to go to heaven and he countered my arguments with his better arguments about why that wasn't going to happen and I need to come back and live a life that so would that make a, me suitable. That was a disappointment. Huge that, disappointment. That you had to come back to this earth and we're all fighting to hang on to life right. here. Tell us the most valuable lessons that you learned when you were with Jesus. God is very disappointed in what we've done because God has sent the prophets and the teachers to teach the people how to be the children of God. And many of them, not everyone, but many of them turned their back and failed to learn. So God said, all right, I'm sending myself, my son, I'm sending the Christ, and he's not only gonna teach you, but he's gonna show you, and he's gonna do the work so that you, you will all be guaranteed salvation if you listen to him. The world has overwhelmingly rejected that. But when you ask Jesus, Jesus, give me patience, give me compassion, give me faith, give me some insight into why I'm here, give me a purpose in life. When you ask him for those things, if you really want it, he will give it to you. He'll give you anything you want. 
Howard, it, it, it's so simple yeah. because it's all in the book. Yeah. Thank you for being with us and sharing your story. You. Really very moving. Howard has written a book called My Descent into Death, A Second Chance at Life. And in this book, he shares in a lot more detail lessons that he learned while he was with Jesus and how his experience helped him to live his life in a radically different way. We'll be right back. Imagine celebrating the miraculous power of the Passover against the breathtaking backdrop of the sparkling Eastern Caribbean Sea on board a luxurious Royal Caribbean cruise ship. Rejoice at the Messianic Passover Seder led by Rabbi Jonathan Burness, remembering God's mighty hand delivered the Jewish people from bondage. Worship because the miracle held a mystery revealed and completed in Yeshua, Jesus, the Passover lamb and ultimate sacrifice for our sins. This is the Jewish Voice seven-day Passover cruise on the turquoise waters of the Eastern Caribbean and the enchanting white sand islands of St. Martin, St. Thomas, and Nassau, Bahamas. You don't want to miss the beauty, worship, and celebration as we share the mystery and the miracle of the Passover on the seas. Join Jonathan Burness and Jewish Voice April 16th through 23rd, 2016. Cabin Space is limited. Book now for the best rooms and rates. Call or click today. Since 1967, Jewish Voice has been dedicated to proclaiming the good news that Yeshua, Jesus, is Messiah and Savior to the Jew first and also to the nations. Now, one way we do this is by helping some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. We've been able to demonstrate God's love by providing these people with medical care, dental care, eye care, all free of charge, but most importantly, the gospel. And it's through your faithful support that we're able to make a difference in their lives. As our way of saying thank you, I'd like to send you my most recent book, A Rabbi Looks at the Afterlife, A New Look at Heaven and Hell with Stories of People Who've Actually Been There. The afterlife has become a hot topic in recent years, partly because spiritual activity is increasing exponentially before the Messiah's return. That's why you need to learn how to rightly discern spiritual truth. In my book, I'll give you solid messianic biblical teaching on heaven and hell. And this book is different from anything else out there because it goes into the ancient rabbinic views on heaven and hell. It examines what the Bible says and it includes eyewitness accounts from those who have actually traveled beyond the veil. Also, I want to send you Howard Storm's book, My Descent into Death, A Second Chance at Life. It may be a bit controversial, but I think it's well worth reading. It recounts his extraordinary journey as an unbeliever who's literally transported to hell, but he's not left there. He's rescued by Jesus and taught many important things that you need to read about in the book. Hey, by the way, we're on Facebook. You can check us out by going to facebook.com slash Jewish Voice. Well, we're out of time once again, but before I leave today, I want to remind you, as I always do, the Bible says to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they shall prosper that love thee. This is Jonathan Bernus saying shalom, and God bless you. Jewish Voice is made possible by the support of friends and partners like you.